Oh, they were not happy over at MSNBC last night. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Trump's historic victory in Iowa sent the woke activists disguised as journalists into a nervous collapse. They simply didn't know how to react. And for us, the result was some of the most entertaining babble of the night. Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, your patron professor. It's so awesome to be with each and every single one of you. The fallout from Trump's epic historic blowout win in Iowa continues this time with the hilarious knee-jerk spasmodic responses from the ultra leftists over at MSNBC here is the Russia collusion queen herself Rachel Maddow's take on what really happened behind Trump's historic win and the big picture takeaway from that and I don't mean to be again too dark as you said on this but it is not if we are worried about the rise of authoritarianism in this country, we are worried about potential rise of fascism in this country. If we're worried about our democracy falling to an authoritarian and potentially fascist form of government. The leader who is trying to do that is part of that equation. Mm -hmm. But people wanting that Correct. is a much mm -hmm. bigger part mm -hmm. of that That's equation. Right. And the American electorate is made up of two major parties. One of those parties has been flirting with extremism on the ultra right for a very long time. They've brought them in in a way that they haven't been central to Republican electoral politics ever before. And I know because I've been studying this. But once you have radicalized one major party so that those are the preferences of the people who adhere to your party, the leaders interchangeable. Mm -hmm. And yes, Trumpism is sometimes what we call it. Mm -hmm. MAGA movement is probably a better way to do it. But there is an authoritarian mm -hmm. movement inside yes. Republican politics that isn't being bamboozled by Trump. Mm -hmm. They are pushing Trump That's to yeah. get more and more right. extreme because the more extreme things he says, the more they, the like more they adhere and to him. That yeah. and, and that is coming from a very large proportion of the American right that adheres to the Republican Party. And that's why this is a Republican Party problem more than it is the problem mm -hmm. of one man and his leader. And we, Doesn't and that we tie can't? together the... the yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gang, that was the very definition of an echo chamber. I mean, what you just saw there was Rachel Maddow. Think about it. One of the staunchest advocates for cancel culture for media censorship, for arresting Biden's political opponents, for removing them from ballots, for corporations teaming up with bureaucrats to force vaccinations and DEI discriminations on their employees. That is the one accusing Trump and the MAGA movement of authoritarian fascism. That. Note, she never even bothers to actually define fascism. Nor does she ever cite a single authoritative source for these claims, even though she assures us she knows what she's talking about. Because I've been studying this. Oh, really? Well, Rachel, if you've been studying the rise of the so-called extreme right, then you'll no doubt be quite familiar with the Oxford Handbook of the Radical Right. It's only the definitive study of the rise of nationalist populism all around the world. It comprises nearly 800 pages of upwards of 30 scholars, all writing about the MAGA movement, Trump, the rise of nationalist populism all over Europe. And interestingly, not a single chapter or article in the entire book equates these movements with fascism. In fact, the authors explicitly and largely distance what they call the radical right from fascism. But then again, Rachel Maddow never let facts get in the way of her kooky conspiracy theories. This guy Kalimnik keeps turning up again and again. Konstantin Kalimnik, Konstantin Kalimnik, Konstantin Kalimnik, Konstantin Kalimnik. He's still Russian military intelligence. Giant aluminum smelters. He started sleeping at his smelters. Sabotage in his smelters. Came to his smelters. Very brutal start, right? Sleeping in the smelters. Tick, 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 tick. Boom. Started ticking again. Tick, 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 tick. Four hours later. Boom. Boom. You're stressing me out. He starts tick, tick, ticking again. The boom goes off twice. First boom. Tick, tick, tick. Boom. Tick, tick, ticking. Second boom. Bombshell. Yeah, that's, that's the so-called reporter that's telling you about what really happened in Iowa last night. She's about as accurate as her so-called reporting on what really happened in Russia in 2016 and the election and all that. The Mueller report, the vaccines, frankly, anything that she spews out of that insufferable propagandistic mouth, for that matter. But 
if you think Rachel Maddow was bad, nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing compares to what you're about to see. But first, gang, you know how much UFC fighters love President Trump and how much he loves them. But have you ever wondered, what do they do to manage their pain? Well, you don't have to. Because a fellow patriot and good friend of this channel is precisely the one who provides relief to that pain. And he's here to do the same for you. Now, we all know that as we age, aches and pains are normal, but they don't have to be. And that's where the groundbreaking medical scientist Clint Winters comes in. You've seen Clint on Fox. You've seen him on this channel a number of times. He's a world-renowned health expert who's unveiled a natural pain reliever that's taking the world by storm. It's called Kano CB2. It's the 100% drug-free way to get full body pain relief without dangerous meds. And it's the official pain reliever for the fighters in the UFC. So whatever you do, make sure to click on that link below and check out Clint's amazingly informative report on how Kano CB2 is changing lives by providing safe and powerful relief at a fraction of the cost of pain pills. Click on that link below right now. But, you know, I feel like the, the important sort of data point, and, and, you know, Steve talks about it a lot. He's, he's going to probably talk about it a little more tonight, is that these, these are white Christians. That this is a state that is overrepresented, overrepresented by white Christians that are going to participate Particularly in these tonight. caucuses, yes. especially tonight. Um, I today, earlier today, reached out to Robert Jones, Robbie Jones, um, from the Public Religion Research Institute, knowing that we were going to talk about Iowa, and this is a hyper evangelical st white state. And he said the following to me: Iowa is about 61 percent white Christian. The country as a whole is approximately 41 percent white Christian. And in Iowa, we're talking about evangelical white Christians. And he said the following. Because I asked him, what do they get out of supporting Donald Trump? Because he keeps losing, he keeps delivering losses and losses and losses. And he said the following, they see themselves as the rightful inheritors of this country. And Trump has promised to give it yeah. back to them. All the things that we think about, about electability, about, you know, what are people gaming out or mm -hmm. none of that matters when you believe that God has given you this country, that it is yours and that everyone who is not a white conservative Christian is a is a fraudulent American, is a less a less, a less real American, then you don't care about electability. You care about what God has given. That, of course, was the ever insufferable Joy Reid Wraith. Huckster par excellence, who blamed Trump's win on too many white Christians. <laughs> That's right. Trump won because there's just too many white Christian, evangelical Christians to boot. And she, unlike Rachel Maddow, she tried to pass herself off as somehow knowledgeable on this subject. She mentioned that she consulted the Public Religion Research Institute, the PRRI. Now, we've reported on them before. I've researched them for some of our other videos. What she obviously doesn't tell you is that the Public Research Research Institute, Public Religion Research Institute, as you may have guessed, is a far-left advocacy group. Keep in mind, this is what the cultural Marxist left has done. They infiltrate cultural institutions, and then they turn around and pretend that such ideological infiltration is perfectly natural and normal. Right? Simply objective reality. So that's what Joy Reid just did. She pretended to be objective. She pretended to be nonpartisan as she cites a radically partisan left-wing organization as if it were objectively authoritative. And just think about how absurd her rant was just there. She actually was opining on Trump's electability after Trump just made history in winning an election by the largest margin ever in the history of the Iowa caucus. Trump makes election history, and she opines with an incoherent screed on his supposedly faulty electability. I mean, only on MSNBC can you even imagine coming across such utter imbecility. Not only that, but what Iowa proved last night is that the polls are right. The polls are dead on. Trump won by 30 points, which is exactly what the Des Moines Register and the Iowa State poll and Emerson all predicted. They all predicted that Trump would win by a historic margin of around 30 points. Those same polls, particularly Emerson, are predicting as we speak that Trump will win the general election with over 300 electoral votes. Even CNN's forecasted map 
has Trump already winning more than the 270 needs for the presidency. What on earth is Joy Reid even talking about? Well, in the end, it's summed up in the term TDS, Trump derangement syndrome. The people who can't tell you what a woman is are trying to make sense of the fact that their world is about to fall apart. Trump is coming back. He's returning. And they simply don't know how to make sense of that. They're all experiencing a cognitive dissonance, a collective concussion, and rambling, incoherent screeds, as would be predicted. But if what we saw last night is any indicator, Trump's wins are just beginning. And if that's the case, MSNBC's freak show is just getting started. But first, gang, as many of you know, we have unfortunately been completely and totally demonetized, which is putting our daily communication with one another at risk like never before. Now, we are actively working on getting this resolved, but as things stand, this channel has, uh, without any warning, been totally and completely demonetized. And as Elon Musk said so powerfully last week, the whole point of these demonetization efforts is to deliberately try to make us patriots feel like we're all alone. They want to sever our relationship with each other and force on us a kind of digital solitary confinement so as to demoralize us and discourage us like never before. But to their horror, it's not working. Over this past week, you have carried this channel like never before. We've had more people than ever make the courageous decision to bypass big tech and join our Insiders Club. We, we have direct access to one another that can never be interrupted by big tech overlords. Over the last seven days, we've seen literally thousands of you come to our rescue. And you've done it in two ways. You've signed up for our free newsletter and you've officially joined our Insiders Club. Those two acts alone are enough for us to collectively stand together and never, ever have our relationship severed. So I'm inviting the rest of you to do the same today just by clicking on that link below and signing up for our newsletter and joining our Insiders Club, you are guaranteeing that there is nothing that big tech can do to get between us and make us feel like we're in a digital solitary confinement. It's as simple as clicking on the link below right now and opting into our free email newsletter. And once you do that, you can financially support us by joining our Insiders Club. Gang, from the bottom of my heart, I cannot thank you enough for your support during a time like this. You are my heroes, and it will be my mission to express my appreciation for every single one of you each and every week.